Good morning. Good morning. It's a joy to welcome all of you to our Lord's Day service, and we do hope that the service is a blessing to you. Today is a communion Sunday, and our communion is open. That means all who wish may receive the Lord's Supper. At that time of worship, we ask that if you would care to receive communion, that you stand in your place. If not, you may remain seated. For our announcements, we have some very special things coming up. On Monday, September 9th, is our dearly departed cemetery walk. And this should be a delightful time. It's on the 9th, and it's our ninth year. And if um, you would like, there are uh, artifacts in the following room. So during fellowship time, if you'd like to view the artifacts on display from some of the lives of the people uh, that we're going to be looking at at the cemetery walk. And on the 15th of September, we have two events. One is between the 8 o'clock and the 10 o'clock service. At the 8 o'clock service, I told our folks today that there are people who will come to me from the 10 o'clock and say, where's this person and that person? I haven't seen them. Are they OK? Are they sick? Or are they on vacation? And I say, no, no, no. They're just at the 8 o'clock service. So we, we miss each other. So what we're going to do is on September 15th, between the services at 840, if it's nice weather, we'll have breakfast al fresco with the two groups. And, uh, and that'll be from 840 to about 940. And then we will not have a regular fellowship hour, which is OK, because the Packers are playing. <laughs> so you can all get out of church and go home and watch the Packers. Our Sister Bay Moravians are undergoing a Moravian day of service on that day. And in your bulletin, there are a number of things that they are doing. If you would like to join them, you may uh, contact Pastor Kerry. We have his phone number and his uh, address here so that you may contact him if you'd like to join with them or pray for them as they engage in service to the community. Are there any other announcements? Let us turn our hearts to worship the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. The watchword for the week is found <clears throat> on the back of your bulletin. Hebrews 13, 1, let mutual love continue. It's a short one. You can remember it. Please pick up your hymnals and sing with us number 714, Blessed Assurance. <laughs>
as we begin the liturgy on page 31. We worship you, Lord God, the High and Lofty One, who inhabits eternity, whose name is Holy. You dwell in the high and holy place, and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit. Give us grace to bring you the sacrifice of a broken and contrite heart, which, which you, O oh God, will not despise. Reviving the soul, the decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. More, More to be desired are they than gold, even as much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. God spoke these words, saying, You shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. <laughs> God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means clearing the unrepentant. Incline your ear and hear, for we do not present our supplications before you on the ground of our righteousness but on the ground of your great mercies. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Do not cast us away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain in us a willing spirit. Have mercy upon us according to your st steadfast love, according to your abundant mercies. Blot out our transgressions through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, have mercy upon us. Amen. Thus says the Lord, I will forgive your iniquity and remember your sin no more. Peace be with you. Please stand.
be seated. It is at this time of our worship that we bring our praise reports and our prayer concerns. For our praise reports, one of the young ladies who's been on our prayer list, uh, she's been battling leukemia, had her latest scan and found that she was in complete remission. So we're so grateful for Carrie and the fact that she is home with her family. She will be undergoing more treatments, but we are so grateful to God. We're grateful for Marilyn and Hugh Whiteley. Uh, Marilyn and Hugh have been here for many years. Marilyn lends her beautiful voice to the choir, and they will be leaving this week for home, which is Canada. Uh, they're selling their place here in Ephraim and they will be living in Canada full time and perhaps visiting us from time to time. So uh, later in the service, we're going to be singing the Moravian farewell hymn uh, to them. We're just so grateful for their life among us. In our first service, uh, Ranny was there and he's turning 93. So we're grateful for that. We have many prayer concerns. We have many people on our cancer treatment list and one, a new person has been added. Her name is Virginia. Her daughter asks for prayers as she battles ovarian cancer. We have Charlie and Bill, Marge, Nancy, Valerie, Jay, Jocelyn, and Carrie. We want to remember Dave in our prayers who's been recovering from a stroke. We want to remember Kathy as she undergoes treatment Bill, he's here today, but he had a health scare, and I know they're leaving this week, and we want to remember Bill in our prayers. Uh, Tim, who tore up his knee, and uh, he had surgery, doing well after surgery, but a young guy and has to be immobile, and he has three kids. So we really need to pray for not only he, but the entire family. We want to remember uh, my brother Steve in prayer. He's having unrelenting pain in his back. Uh, my brother Bud has asked for prayer for he and Jake. We want to remember all of those in the path of the hurricane. Uh, we want to remember those in Odessa, Texas. Uh, several people lost their lives and there were many people wounded in the shooting in Texas. We want to remember D uh, Dick and Claire. The flowers today are in their honor and we ask for your prayers of strength for them. Are there any other prayer concerns that you have? Yes, Ken. A uh, good friend uh, from Bay Ridge Harbor uh, named Max. Um, Max, after lots of treatments, uh, chemo, radiation, and cell confused with cells, um, found a total last Monday, he had six weeks to live. We ask for Max, who has just been told that he has six weeks to live. Let's remember Max in our prayers. Yes, Bob. Uh, Carrie Gibson was a girl from our church in Illinois who was driving home to get married and had a, a drunk driver hit her on the way home and she's in the hospital. Yes, let's remember Carrie Gibson, who's in the hospital after being hit by a drunk driver. Any others? Yes. Linda? ask for prayers for my daughter's friend Angela in Virginia. She had cancer surgery about 10, 12 days ago and she had a scan yesterday and it has already grown. Let's remember Angela in our prayers today. And Niles? Well, I got some joys. I got my friend here from Florida, Shelby. Well, it's a joy to have all of you here today, and may the service be a blessing especially to you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, our hearts are full as we come today in the joy of knowing you, in the joy of being surrounded by the saints. We're so grateful for Carrie's good news that her leukemia is in complete remission. <coughs> We ask that you could continue to strengthen her. 
We're so grateful for Marilyn and Hugh and the many years that they have been here in the summer to join us and to give to us their companionship. And we ask that you would be with them and provide them God's speed as they leave us. We're so grateful that you have given to Rani another year of life. We're so grateful for the visitors and friends who have come here today to worship with us. We ask that you would be with those who are undergoing cancer treatments, who have such a battle going on within themselves for Virginia and Charlie, for Bill and Marge and Nancy, Valerie and Jay, Jocelyn, Carrie and Angela. We ask that you would sustain them with your mighty arm. We ask that you would be with Dave and with Kathy and Bill, that you would grant to them your healing mercy, that Tim might know as he is laid up that he is underneath the everlasting arms. We ask that you would speed deliverance to my brother Steve and to Bud and to Jake as they struggle. We lift up before you Claire and Dick and we thank you for their lives among us. We ask that they would be strengthened this day. We ask that you would be gentle with Max as he takes his final journey, that you would grant to him your peace beyond all understanding, that as Carrie struggles in the hospital, that she might know your healing touch. We bring before you our brothers and sisters in Odessa, Texas. We ask, O oh Lord, to comfort all who mourn, to bring healing to the broken bodies, and to bring wisdom to our leaders. We ask, O oh Lord, for all those in the path of the hurricane, that you would grant to them safety and deliverance. We bring ourselves before you today, and we thank you that you hear us and love us. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> announcement. My son had his birthday yesterday, his 24th birthday. He's here today. He's putting his hoodie over his head. And there is a cake after church in his honor. So we ask that you um, wish him happy birthday. Now let us continue to worship our Lord with the giving of our tithes and our offerings.
And we ask that we may use all our gifts to further your kingdom, to spread your love and your grace to everyone whom we meet. For we ask it in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first scripture lesson is taken from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8 and 15 through 16. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, and those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you, or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Our second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 14, verses 7 through 14. When Jesus, at a dinner, noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host, and the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then, in disgrace, you would start to take the lower place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you and you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Lord, I ask that all my words and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week, I had the privilege of talking about being in the festal company of the angels. The angels gathered in festal array. We talked about dancing in the heavenly places and that when we're in worship, that we are trotting on hallowed sacred ground, holy ground. And what a wonderful picture that is. And at the very end of that chapter, the writer ends with our God is a consuming fire. Boy, do I like that image. And then right after that, he pulls us right back down to earth and says, love each other. You got to be hospitable, especially to strangers. You got to remember those in prison, not just to feel sorry for them, not just to visit them once in a while, but you have to feel what they're feeling in your bones. And why does he say that? Because when you're feeling what they're feeling in your bones, you can't say, well, you know, they deserve to be there. They did something bad. They're the other. He said, if you know people are being tortured, you feel that in your bones. He said that we have to be content. And he said, if you're married, stay married and do right by each other. <coughs> and then he says, if you want to worship, you have to share what you have. Now, I've got to tell you, I much prefer dancing with angels up in the heavenly places than doing all of this stuff. I don't mind the mutual love because mutual love, that, that's an exchange, a mutuality. If somebody loves me, I'm supposed to love them back. That's okay. But some of the rest of this stuff I'm not too keen on. And I realize that the reason that the author starts with this wondrous picture of the heavenly places and then yanks us back to earth is because it's intertwined. We cannot be in the spirit realm and enjoying the things of God without taking care of the people on this earth. They're intertwined. If I'm going to dance with the angels in the heavenly kingdom, I've got to dance with a few angels on earth. And some of them might not be so pretty. I think of that word hospitality. Do you know what the word actually means? It's a Greek word and it means love of the strange. <laughs> that wonderful. The people in ancient times had to practice hospitalities because there were no beautiful hotels. You weren't checked in and, uh, and people trying to make you feel comfortable. There was no trip advisor to complain on if you didn't like what somebody did. And inns were notorious. Most of them were brothels. 
So they were not places that respectable people went. So part, uh, if you were traveling, you hoped that you would gain hospitality, that somebody in the village would open their doors to you. And this was wonderful for people in the village because many of them did not travel outside their own village. So when they welcomed the stranger in, they welcomed their stories and their uh, talk of other places, and that's how they understood the outside world was through hospitality. It was a wonderful thing. And you know that hospitality means a lot of work because you have to provide beds and you have to provide linens and you have to provide fruit food. I was thinking of hospitality this week when I went to the Loaves and Fishes, and that's our feeding ministry uh, at once a month. In this particular month, our ladies got to provide desserts. And as I'm sitting at this lavish meal with people across from me uh, that I got to know a little better, I said, those are Ephraim Moravian's desserts. <laughs> and these folks' eyes lit up because they know about Ephraim Moravian desserts. And we all had to sample every little thing. And I thought of the bakers, thought, isn't it wonderful that when they were baking, there was a divine spark in their work because hospitality is so near to the heart of God. When I was in Maryland, my church was asked to provide hospitality. But it wasn't hospitality to people that anybody else wanted. This was to single men who were on the streets. During winter time, when the homeless were looking for shelter, there were shelters for women, there were shelters for families, but if you were a single guy, there was no shelter for you. And so this was a real need, and the goal of the shelter, there was only one goal, and it was to keep people from freezing to death on our streets in the wintertime. So our church was asked to take a week. Well, we had no provisions. We had a fellowship hall, and they said, we'll provide the cots. Well, that meant we had to find blankets and plates, and we had to find people to make meals and all the things that go into hospitality. And so I was going to give a list and ask people to bring in used blankets, and somebody in my congregation came to me and said, you know, our family has always had a roof over our heads. We've always had everything we needed, so we are going to buy brand new blankets for these men. They shouldn't be on hand-me-down. Another young person came to me and said, I don't think these men should eat on paper plates. They always get paper plates. Why don't we provide some nice china for them? So she scoured the thrift stores to find some reasonably priced china and paid for it herself out of her income so that these men would have this gift. We had to have people at night to sleep with them, so some of our members took their sleeping bags and slept on the floor with them. Now, I've got to tell you, the pastor of the church who preached about hospitality, who encouraged this ministry, I was not about to sleep on a floor with some guys. Every night, I went to the dinners because I knew our folks could cook. So I wasn't going to miss the dinners. But then I went home to my nice, comfortable bed and slept in my nice, comfortable bed while our more Christian brothers and sisters took to the floors with our guests. But then one morning when I came in to, uh, to bid them farewell, because every morning they had to leave and they had to go to their uh, places of work or just go on the streets. The, the uh, shelter was only for the evening time and night time. But that particular morning, there had been a snowstorm and it was bitterly cold. Folks said to me, we, we really can't kick these folks out. Well, my monitors, the people who had stayed overnight, they had to go home. They, a lot of them had jobs to go to. So I stayed with them. And I realized what a privilege I had. I spoke with one young man, he was the youngest guy there, 
And I noticed that during the week, the older guys were very solicitous of him. When he came in, he had, I thought, shoes on, but they were really galoshes, and so he did not have proper shoes. He never advocated for himself. Somebody came up to me and said, you know, those shoes are not proper. He's going to have frostbite if we don't do something, so we took care of that. Anything he needed, somebody else came to me and asked on his behalf. Well, I figured out why, because when I was in conversation with him, I realized he was profoundly mentally ill. He talked to me about if you sat at certain places in D.C., you could hear the dirt talk to you. How terribly sad. And I realized all these broken men, many of them with alcohol and drug addictions, took care of this young man in their own brokenness. I had another man who had a hair trigger temper, and he was a big guy, and everybody was afraid of him. And any time, anything could set him off. But that day, he was so grateful to be indoors that he laid on his cot and started reciting the Psalms. The leader of the group came to me and said, you know, this is really the best shelter we've been at. And so, of course, I said, oh, why is that? Well, he mentioned the cooking, and I knew that would be part of it. But he said, you don't treat us like criminals. You don't lock us in a room. You treat us like men. Now, by the end of that week, some of the guys, we, we didn't have showers, so we would transport them to showers. Well, some did not really want to do that and said, no, thank you. So you can imagine what that fellowship hall smelled like by the end of the week. When they picked up their cots to go to the next shelter, they cleaned that place sparkling clean. And I thought, I have been in the presence of angels. You see, when we provide hospitality, we are in the presence of angels. Angels, what are angels? They're messengers of God. And we can learn even from the most broken person. But it takes us extending hospitality. And someone asks, well, when we extend hospitality, especially to strangers, we could get taken advantage of. Of course you can. There was a man in that group that we had to say, go to another shelter because he was th stealing from others. And so we had to remove him from that group. Of course you're going to be taken advantage of. But don't let that stop you. Because if we do, if we hold ourselves up in a holy huddle and only come here on Sundays to get something and don't realize that during the week we have an opportunity to remain on holy ground with the broken and the lost among us, then we have missed something precious. So this day, this week, engage with the angels among us and then next Sunday, we can dance with the angels and the saints below and the saints above. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be on holy ground, not only in this space, but every place we go to welcome the stranger, to love the unlovely, to be a blessed part of your kingdom. Amen. Would you turn in your bulletins to our farewell hymn, and we are singing to Marilyn and Hugh today. Where is Hugh? Where is he? Hugh, he's right over there, and Marilyn, raise your hand, she's in the choir. And Hugh, thank you that every week you gave up sitting with your beloved so that we could have her in the choir. And we'll be singing, uh, why don't we stand to sing, With Your Presence, Lord, Our Head and Savior. It's in your bulletin.
be seated and please be sure to bid Marilyn and Hugh Godspeed during our time of fellowship. You would turn in your insert for the Lord's Supper. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Please stay. <laughs> here today in the company of angels both in the heavenlies and here on earth. We thank you for the messages of the gospel that we receive every day if we but have ears to hear. We ask that your spirit would feel free to be part of this part of our service that you would visit each one and whisper your grace and your peace. For we ask it in Jesus name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please be seated.
please stand. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. By your divine presence, by the holy sacraments, by all the merits of your life, sufferings, death, and resurrection. Bless and comfort us, gracious Lord and God. Amen. In the same way, after supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Please be seated. <laughs>
our Lord Jesus Christ said, drink from this, all of you. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give to you his peace. Amen. 